Good evening everyone. My name is Leila Meduhay Longsot. And for today, uh, my topic is all about the listening process in speech speaker. So, listening is an active process um, by which we make sense of access and respond to what we hear. The listening process involves the five stages. First is receiving, second one understanding, third one evaluating, the fourth one remembering, and the fifth one is responding. So when we say receiving, um, the intentional focus of hearing a speaker message, it happens when we filter out the other sources so that we can um, isolate um, the message to avoid the confusing mixture of incoming stimuli. So, when we say receiving, is um, at this stage, we're still only hearing the message. Um, that this stage is represented by the air because um, it is the primary tool involved with this stage of the listening process. So, for example, um, one of the author of this book recalls a political rally for a presidential candidate at which about 5,000 people were crowded into in the outdoor amphitheater. So, when the candidate finally started speaking, um, the cheering and yelling was so loud that the candidate couldn't be heard um, easily despite using a speaker system. Um, in this example, our co-author had difficulty receiving the message because of the external noise. Um, this is only the um, example of the way of hearing can be required sincere effort. And but you must hear the message before can continue the process of listening. So the second one is understanding. Um, in in the understanding stage, we attempt to learn the meaning of the message, which um, which is not always easy. So, um, for one thing, if a speaker does not um, enunciate clearly, um, it may be difficult to tell what the message was. Did your friend say, "I think she'll be late for the class," or may uh, may my teacher delay the class? So, the stages 2, 3, and 4 are represented by the brain because it is um, a primary tool in both which these stages of listening um, process. So, um, even when we have understood the word in message because of the differences in our background and experience. So, we sometimes make the mis uh, make mistake of attaching our own meaning to the words of others. For example, um, say you have made plans with your friends to meet in a certain movie theater, but you arrive and nobody else show up. Eventually, you find out that your friends at the different theater at all the way across the town where the same movie is playing. Everyone else understood that the meeting place was the west side location, but you wrongly understand it as the east side location and therefore miss out of a part of a fun. So the consequences on ineffective listening in the classroom can be much worse. When your professor advises students to get an early start of your speech, um, he or she probably hopes that you will begin your research right away and move to the developing thesis statement and outlining um, the speech as soon as possible. So, understanding is the most important part of our life. Okay, so the third one is remembering. Remembering begins with the listening. If you can't remember something that was said, you might not, you might not be listening effectively. So, um, Okay, um, the most common reason for a not remembering a message after the fact is because it wasn't really learned in the place uh, in the first place. So, however, even when you are listening at, uh, attentively, some of message are more difficult 
than the others to understand and remember. Highly complex message that are filed with detailed call for highly developed listening skills. Moreover, sometimes it distracts your attention even for a moment. You could miss out the information that explains other new concepts you hear when you begin to listen, uh, listen fully again. So, it is also important to know that can um, improve your memory of a message by processing it meaningfully. That is, by applying it the way that are meaningful to you. Instead of um, simply repeating a new acquaintance name or over and over. For example, you might remember it by associating with um, something in your own life. Emily, you might say, um, remind me of the em uh, of the Emily I know in the middle school. Or Mr. Impala's name reminds me of the Impala father drives. So finally, if understanding has been inaccurate, collection of a message will be inaccurate too. So... Um, the fourth one is evaluating. So, when we say evaluating or judging the value of the message, so um, we might be thinking um, this makes sense or conversely, this is very odd because everyone embodies biases and perspective learned from widely diverse sets of um, life experience. Evaluation of the same message can be vary widely from the listener to another. Even the most open-minded listener will have the opinion of a speaker and those opinion will influence how the message is evaluated. People are more likely to evaluate the message positively if the speaker speaks clearly, rep uh, present ideas logically and gives reason to support the points made. Okay, the last one is feedback. Okay, responding sometimes referred to as a feedback. It is the fifth and final stage of listening. So we have two feedback. The formative feedback and the summative feedback. Okay, when we say formative feedback, not all response occurs at the end of the message. So formative feedback is... um. Natural part of ongoing transaction between a speaker and the listener. As the speaker delivers the message, the listener signals his or her involvement with a focused attention. Note taking, nodding, and the other behaviors that indicate understanding or failure to understand the message. These signals are important to the speaker who is interested um, in whether the message is clear and accepted with um or with the the content of messages the meeting resistance or preconceived ideas speaker can use the feedback to decide whether additional um example support material explanation is needed so when we say summative feedback it also a given at the end of the communication when you attend the political rally uh, uh Presentation given by the speaker you admire, or even a class. There are verbal and nonverbal ways of indicating your appreciation for your disagreement with the message of the speaker at the end of the message. So maybe you'll uh, stand up and applause of your speaker agreed with, or just um sitting down, staring at the silence after listening to a speaker you didn't like. In the other cases. Um, a speaker may be attempting to persuade you to donate a charity or if the speaker passes a bucket and you make a donation, you are providing feedback on the speaker effectiveness. At the same time, we don't always listen most carefully to the message of the speaker we admire. Sometimes we um, simply enjoy in their presence or our summative feedback is not about the message but about our but about our attitude of the speaker if your feedback is limited to something like i just love your voice you might be indicating that you did not listen carefully to the content of the message so this is a little doubt that by now 
you are beginning to understand the complicity of listening and the great potential of errors by becoming aware of what we um, is involved with active listening and where difficulties um, might lie. You can prepare yourself both as a listener, as a speaker, to minimize listening errors when you're on public speeches. Okay, so we proceed to the next topic, commercial advertising. Commercial advertising allows your business to build its customer base by taking your message directly to customer. It allows you to control the message, whether you intend to inform the public about your company existence, educate customer about your offerings, build your brand identity, or demonstrate where your competitors fail to make the grade. Okay, so... Commercial advertising lets your target audience know that you exist and that you have the products and services that you can solve a problem of their lives. If you're offering the distinctive product services of a value proposition to the customer, commercial advertising is a way to get the word quickly and more broadly done through referrals from existing customers or waiting for people to find by the chance. So um we um the education we have education reaching out your audience via television and where you can educate the public about what you offer and how people can get your product or services. So we have also branding, particularly for a low in uh, involvement buying decision for customer just want to complete quickly a positive expression of your brand and what it um, stands for can be central ingredients that genera uh, generate sales. So, okay, so we proceed to the um, next topic is all about campaign. So, when we say campaign, it's a plan to set activities that people carry out over a period um, of time in order to achieve something such as public speaking, social, or political change. So, when we say um, campaign is systematic courses, aggressive activities for some specific purposes. Okay, purposes, a sales campaign that competition by viral political candidates and organization for public. Okay, so... Hey guys, thank you for listening. That's all. Thank you. Bye-bye.